Sounder by William H. Armstrong, Chapter 6 Now the cabin was even quieter than it had been before loneliness put its stamp on everything. Sounder rolled his one eye in lonely dreaming. The boy's mother had longer periods of just humming without drifting into soft singing. The boy helped her stretch longer clotheslines from the cabin to the cottonwood trees at the edge of the fields. In the spring, the boy went to the fields to work. He was younger than the other workers. He was afraid and lonely. He heard them talking quietly about his father. He went to do yard work at the big houses where he had gathered weeds behind his father. How old are you? a man asked once when he was paying the boy his wages. You're a hard worker for your age. The boy did not remember his age. He knew he had lived a long, long time, and the long days and months and seasons built a powerful re restlessness into the boy. Don't fret, his mother would say when he first began to talk of going to find his father. Time's passing. Won't be much longer now. To the end of the county might be a far journey, and out of the county would be a far, far journey. But I'll go, the boy thought. Why are you so feared for me to go, he, asked, he would ask. For now, he was old enough to argue with his mother. In Bible stories, everybody's always going on a long journey. Abraham goes on a long journey. Jacob goes into a strange land where his uncle lives, and he don't know where he lives, but he finds him easy. Joseph goes on the longest journey of all and has more troubles, but the Lord watches over him. And in Bible story journeys, ain't no journey hopeless. Everybody finds what they're supposed to find. The state had many road camps, which moved from place to place. There were also prison farms and stone quarries. Usually the boy would go searching in autumn when work in the fields was finished. One year he heard, yes, the man you speak of was here, but I heard he was moved to the quarry in Gilmer County. One year it had been, yes, he was in the quarry, but he was sick in the winter and was moved to the bean farm in Bartow County. More often, a guard would chase him away from the gate or from standing near the high fence with the barbed wire along the top of it, and the guard would laugh and say, I don't know no names, I only know numbers. Besides, you can't visit here. You can only visit in jail. Another would sneer, You wouldn't know your old man if you saw him. He's been gone too long. You sure you know who your pa is, kid? The men in striped convict suits Riding in the mule-drawn carrot wagons with big wooden frames resembled large pit crates, yelled as they rode past the watching boy, "Hey, boy, looking for your big brother? What you doing, kid? Seeing how how you gon' gonna like it when you grow up?" And still the boy look would look through the slats of the crates for a familiar face. He would watch men walking in line, dragging chains on their feet, to see if he could recognize his father's step as he had known it along the road. Coming from the fields to the cabin, once he listened outside the gate on a Sunday afternoon and heard a preacher telling about the Lord loosening the chains of Peter when he had been thrown into prison. Once he stood at the guardhouse door of a quarry and some ladies dressed in warm heavy coats and boots came and sang Christmas songs. In his wandering, the boy learned that the words men use most are get, get out, and keep moving. Sometimes he followed the roads from one town to another. But if he could, he would follow railroad tracks. On the roads where there were, on the roads there were people, and they frightened the boy. The railroads usually ran along the flat, silent countryside where the boy could walk alone with his terrified thoughts. He learned that railroad stations, post offices, courthouses, and churches were places to escape from the cold for a few hours in the late night. His journeys in search of his father's accomplished. One wonderful thing. In the towns he found that people threw newspapers and magazines into trash barrels so he could always find something with which to practice his reading. When he was tired or when he waited at some high wire gate, hoping his father would pass in the line, he would read the big lettered words first and then practice the small lettered words. In his lonely journeying, the boy had learned to tell himself the stories his mother had told him at night in the cabin. He liked the way they always ended with the right thing happening, and people and stories were never feared of anything. Sometimes he tried to put together things he had read in the newspapers he found and make new stories, but the ends never came out right, and they made him more afraid. 
The people he tried to put in stories from the papers always seemed like strangers. Some story people he wouldn't <clears throat> he wouldn't be afraid of if he met them on the road. He thought he liked the David and Joseph stories best of all. Why you want them told over and over, his mother had asked so many times. Now alone on a bed of pine needles, he remembered that he could never answer his mother. He would just wait, and if his mother wasn't sad and with her lips stretched thin, he, she would stop humming and tell about David the boy or King David. And she felt good. If she felt good and started long enough before bedtime, he would hear about Joseph the slave boy, Joseph in prison, Joseph the dreamer, and Joseph the big man in Egypt. And when she had finished all about Joseph, she would say, Ain't no earthly power can make a story end as pretty as Joseph's. Twas the Lord. The boy listened to the wind passing through the tops of the tall pines. He thought they moved like giant brooms sweeping the sky. The moonlight raced down through the broken spaces of swaying trees and sent bright shafts of light along the ground and over him. The voice of the wind in the pines reminded him of one of the stories his mother had told him about King David. The Lord had said to David that when he heard the wind moving in the tops of the cedar trees, he would know that the Lord was fighting on his side and he would win. When David moved his army around into the hills to attack his enemy, he heard the mighty roar of the wind moving in the tops of the trees, and he cried out to his men that the Lord was moving above them into battle. The boy listened to the wind. He could hear the mighty roaring. He thought he heard the voice of David and the tramping of many feet. He wasn't afraid with David near. He thought he saw a lantern moving far off in the woods, and as he fell asleep, he thought he heard the deep ringing voice of Sounder rising out of his great throat. Riding the midst of the lull.